With the current price of energy at an all-time high and very few cheap tariffs to be had, it is no longer a case of simply switching energy provider to save money. And with the recent October price cap announcement and more rises on the way in January, you'd be right in thinking the only way to reduce your monthly energy bill is to use less in the first place. This is clearly easier said than done, but in this video I'm going to explain a few ways we've reduced our gas use, specifically by making some simple changes or just by adjusting our energy using behaviour. A lot of people, and this used to be me, get hung up on how much their direct debit payments are. These amounts are calculated using the unit rate of the tariff you're on, multiplied by how much energy your energy company expects you to use over a year, based on a number of factors, including the metre readings you give them. If you use less energy, you will pay less money, and you have a good case to ask your supplier to lower your direct debit or ask for a refund of any built up credit. If you're on the price cap, you may want to leave this in your account given the impending price rises. We'll share with you how we've been able to reduce our gas consumption by approximately 3,000 kilowatt hours, or around 20% over the last nine months compared with the same period last year. This reduction equates to around about 450 pounds, if going by the current cap, which is due in October 2022. You can also download our fully customizable spreadsheet to keep an eye on your monthly usage and set a reduction target. More on this later. We'll also talk about what support you can access if you're struggling with your energy bills and is cancelling your direct debit a good idea. We've looked at reducing our gas consumption as a household of five, two adults and three kids under the age of 10 in the north of England for several reasons. We wanted to reduce our monthly expenses in preparation for the energy price rise. With energy prices rising at the back end of 2020, in May 2021 we fixed our gas tariff on a two year fixed deal at just over 3p per kilowatt hour of gas. This comes to an end in May 2023 and when it does we're likely to be paying at least five times that amount. Also importantly to us we want to reduce our carbon footprint. If there's any good to come from this farcical situation is that we'll all be looking at using what we do use more efficiently. This notion to change our energy consuming behaviour was also triggered by installing a Tardo Smart Thermostat in 2020 and taking part in the Octopus Energy Winter Workout in the winter of 2021-2022. For those of you who aren't familiar with it, the Octopus Energy Winter Workout was a challenge set by Octopus Energy to their customers to reduce their gas consumption by a certain amount to reach a personal target over a 12 week period between December 2021 and February 2022. Those who reached this figure obviously saved money on their bills by using less gas, but were also entered into a weekly prize draw, an end of competition prize draw, and a share of the remaining prize money for those who've managed to reach their personal targets. Given we are on gas central heating and hot water, we weren't sure how well we'd do in this, so set a target at a modest 5% reduction. Octopus gave us some pointers like turning down the flow temperature of our boiler, who even knew that that was a thing? We definitely didn't and I was a little bit dubious, but it really is easy to do, despite not having any markings on our ancient boiler. If you have a boiler and a hot water cylinder like us, the recommendation is setting the flow temperature on your boiler to around 60 degrees Celsius, and the same setting on your hot water cylinder to 60 degrees. Just a note, hot water should be stored at high enough temperature to stop bacteria like Legionella from multiplying. We also took their advice to keep the cold out. With these thermal imaging camera pictures, you can see the difference closing our curtains made to help keep the residual warm air inside our house, rather than escaping out the window. Seen here by the warm yellow colouring rather than the cold blue colouring. We also stopped heating rooms that we weren't using. This was made easier through scheduling and automation with our Tardo Smart TRVs, which we had installed the previous winter to most radiators in our house. It can also be easily done using non-smart TRVs, which we still have in some areas. It's an old one, but it makes sense. Turning down the thermostat by a degree or even half a degree is enough to make a significant impact over time. One of the areas we changed entirely was how our thermostat was set overnight. Before we installed the Tardo system, we would have our thermostat set to at least 18 degrees, between midnight and 6am. Were we awake? No, not at all. Did it need to be this high? Of course it didn't. 
I suspect it was just a habit that we continued from when our kids were younger and we would often wake up with them for feeds or nappy changes overnight. The house being reasonably warm made the fact that we were waking up at 3am in the morning more bearable. Now that our youngest is 5 years old, we don't need to worry about those overnight temperatures so much anymore. The UK government had previously recommended a minimum temperature of 21 degrees for living rooms and 18 degrees for bedrooms, but then changed this advice to at least 18 degrees or 65 degrees Fahrenheit for all rooms. Given that we are young and generally well, we just turned the heating off entirely overnight with no minimum temperature, and it's not been a problem, even in the winter months. Those who are elderly or have other health conditions may be less able to regulate their temperature and detect the cold, so a threshold of 80 degrees seems sensible and may need to be further individualised. Those are just some of the tips we use to reduce our gas consumption in those 12 weeks, and I've linked this article in the video description below if you want to check these out in a bit more detail. At the end of the 12 weeks we'd achieved a 14% gas reduction nearly three times our personal target of 5%, which was a saving of around £27.51 based on our unit price of gas, which was just over 3p per kilowatt hour. Given we'd achieved our personal target, we shared the remaining pot with others who had also met their target, and we were further credited £7.10. Now, whilst £34.61 isn't a huge amount of money, we'd argue it left us with something more valuable, a challenge and change to our energy consuming behaviour and habits. We usually switch off our gas central heating schedule from April till around September, October time, and it was therefore going to be a lot harder to find areas where we could reduce our gas consumption during this period. But we were determined to carry on reducing our gas consumption and use our gas more efficiently. But why? As I mentioned before, our current rate of just over 3p doesn't run out till May next year, but when it does we'll likely be paying over 5 times as much per kilowatt hour of gas. Reducing our energy use by a significant amount will take a massive change in our energy consuming behaviours. I still plan on exploring the best gas tariff options closer to May next year and I'll keep you updated on what we're going to do. And you can click that subscribe button for free to stay notified when that video drops. Now I don't usually mention books I've been reading, in fact this may well be a channel first, but talking about changing behaviour and habits, this book Atomic Habits by James Clear is perfect for facilitating those changes. I happen to be reading this around the same time as taking part in the winter workout, and it has really helped us to continue the change in our energy behaviour. James talks about there being four laws of behaviour change, which ultimately improves the chance of you successfully implementing and continuing a behaviour change. The first one is to make it obvious and design our environment around our cues. We live in the northeast of England, and Northumbrian Water, our water supplier, very kindly offer a free water saving kit for households, which includes a five minute shower timer. We fixed this on our shower screen in a very obvious place, which reminded us to try and keep to that five minute shower. Shorter showers meant we needed less hot water, and we've been able to reduce the amount of time the hot water is on in the morning to just 15 minutes. I've dropped a link in the video description box below if you want to find out more about these water saving kits. Secondly, make it attractive. As humans we're motivated by the anticipation of reward, so making these changes more attractive will help us stick to them. The attraction for us was knowing reducing our energy consumption would reduce our monthly expenses, in view of the upcoming price rises, and also reduce our carbon footprint. Thirdly, make it easy. We actually flipped this one on its head and made it more difficult. I'll explain. When we look back at our gas consumption after installing our Tardo device, you can see we managed to reduce our use during the winter months. But in the summer months, this surprisingly went up, as you can see here. One of the reasons may have been that with Tardo, it was easy to turn on the heating in just one room. For example, we would turn on the bathroom radiator via the smart TRV, so we had a warm towel getting out of the shower like we would in winter. With our old non-smart system, we would have had to have gone downstairs, turn it on from the main programmer, and then remember to go downstairs to turn it off again. More steps meant we didn't do this, and as a result use less gas. Not wanting to lose the impetus we built up in the winter, we locked the manual control feature on the app for our bathroom smart TRV, and dried our tiles outside instead, weather permitting. Fourthly and finally, make it satisfying. Tracking and comparing our energy use compared to the previous year gave us an indication of how we were doing and the satisfaction that we were reducing our gas use. 
What's more, adding a section for cost and carbon savings further made this more satisfying. I would certainly recommend that you do check out James's book. If you sign up via the link in the video description, it will allow you to listen to it for free via Amazon Audible on a one month trial. Those of you who are already Prime customers get two audiobooks as part of your trial, and of course you can cancel at any time. And these four laws of behaviour change can be applied to everything in your life, from energy consumption habits, time, money, health, exercise and more. In fact, that's exactly what I've done with my exercise habits. I made it obvious by leaving out my running stuff the night before, right next to my bed so I know I'm going to be doing a run in the morning. I've made it attractive by uploading some of my favourite audiobooks onto my phone which I can then listen to whilst running. I've made it easy by scheduling a slot in my diary free from any distractions to go running. And I've made it satisfying. After I've finished, I'll grab a drink of water and play a quick game of FIFA as I attempt to break into Division 1. You get the idea, download the audiobook for free, you won't regret it. And to make it even easier for you to keep an eye on your energy behaviour change, we've made the spreadsheet available for you to download via the link in the video description box below. To use it, simply input your current gas tariff details and the expected price rise per kilowatt hour and standing charge. So for October 2022, the average for all regions is 14.75p per kilowatt hour and 28.49p standing charge for gas. Then fill out your consumption data for the previous year and the current year. You can usually find this information on your energy provider's online account or app. The spreadsheet will then automatically calculate the other numbers for you, including your total percentage reduction, daily, monthly and yearly costs excluding and including the standing charge. If you're looking at the year to date, you can enter the same consumption figure in the months that you've not reached yet, as seen here. These figures can then be updated each month. It will also automatically work out what the price cap means you'll be paying per day, month and year compared to your current tariff. You can see based on my previous consumption, paying the October price cap would mean a yearly cost of £2,500, up from 712 Reducing our gas consumption, as we have, will mean we pay around £450 less than if we'd made no energy consumption changes at all. You can also complete this for your electric use if on a single rate tariff. What's more, you can set your own reduction target in this cell here. We currently have this set to 15%. Each monthly change to the previous year cell will turn green or red. Obviously green if you've managed to achieve your target and red if you haven't. You can see from our spreadsheet here how I've managed to build upon the energy consumption reduction made during the winter workout. You'll notice March was a bit of an odd one where we didn't reach our target and actually use more gas compared to last year. I suspect this was because we voluntarily moved onto a more expensive electricity tariff to lock in the price before it went up again in April and use more gas as a result. However, given what we know now and where electricity rates have gone since, I'd say it was a pretty good switch. As I mentioned before, we only started some of these energy habit changes in April and you can see we have achieved our target reduction for all of these months compared to the last year. In fact, since April we've reduced our gas consumption by an impressive average of 42%, compared to the same period last year. We've also made some other changes to our energy use. The kids were previously having a shower every day, probably a bit excessive, and we've now reduced this to three to four times a week and scheduled those times to after certain activities like football training and matches. This has also freed up more time for other activities, non-energy consuming naturally. We used to heat the water a bit longer, so we had enough hot water to wash our dishes. During the winter workout we reduced this down, and it was an easy change to continue into the summer months. With these changes, we've since been able to turn off our hot water on certain days. It also helps to keep the water we've spent time and money heating hotter for longer. And to help with this we installed a hot water tank jacket, which was a pretty easy DIY job. You can see the difference the hot water tank jacket and pipe insulation make in these before and after photos. The brighter colours represent heat escaping and the darker colours show significantly reduced heat loss. Continuing with changing our behaviours, in the winter months our living room gets quite cold as it has three external walls and a fireplace which we don't tend to use. You can see how low the temperature drops in the evening in our living room. 
If we've been working in the study on an evening and want to watch something for a break, or when we're done working, we've started staying in our already heated study rather than heating up the cold living room, only to stay in there for an hour or so before we go to bed. Some of the changes we have made might not work for you, as we're all different and have different ideas of what we'll accept, but some of the changes we made may well help you reflect on your own energy consumption habits and make some workable changes in your home. Over the last nine months, we've managed to reduce our energy consumption by approximately 20% or 3,000 kilowatt hours. With the recently announced price cap in October 2022, this will equate to a saving of around 450 pounds. Our other objective is to reduce our carbon footprint. 2022 figures suggest each kilowatt of gas emits 0.183 kilograms of CO2. So by reducing our gas consumption by 3000 kilowatt hours, we've managed to reduce our CO2 emissions by 550 kilograms. That's just over half a ton for our one household. At the bottom of this spreadsheet, there's a products button to link to some of the items we've bought and mentioned in this video. These have been split into low, medium and high budget items. The channel may get a small kickback for items bought through the links above at no extra cost to you and will donate 50% of any money received to the charity National Energy Action who are working to end fuel poverty in England, Wales and Northern Ireland. From October, National Energy Action predicts 8.8 .8 million UK households could be in fuel poverty. That's one in three. That's a really scary statistic right there. In my day job as a healthcare professional, I've increasingly had people telling me how concerned they are with the rising cost of energy and that being the main trigger for their deteriorating mental health. You can also find some useful links by clicking on the support page here. There are a number of organisations including National Energy Action, Citizens Advice and National Deadline. If you're struggling to pay your energy bill, you should contact your supplier as soon as you can if you're worried about paying your energy bills or are in debt to your supplier. Suppliers must work with you to agree on a payment plan you can afford under off-gen rules. Listed here are the suppliers and their support pages if you're struggling to pay your energy bills. Campaign group Don't Pay UK is urging millions to join its energy boycott and cancel their direct debits on the 1st of October. But should you do this if you're struggling? And what's the worst that could happen if you do? Well, the worst case scenario is you could have your energy supply cut off. As winter approaches, this could be disastrous to your health and well-being and that of your family. There's also the longer term consequence of any court judgement for accumulating debt which will affect your credit rating and increase the likelihood of debt collectors becoming involved. You may also need to pay extra costs such as the legal fees of the energy firm. As I said before, if you're struggling, access the online support above and contact your energy provider early on. Also linked here is an excellent Facebook group specifically for energy support and advice where you can ask questions and engage with like-minded individuals. If you found this video useful and think we've earned it then please like it and subscribe to the channel to keep up with new content we'll be uploading. Let us know in the comments section below what have you done to reduce your gas consumption and how much has it reduced it by. And finally, thanks for watching. If you want to find out what we think of the TARDIS Smart Thermostat, you can check out our full review by clicking on the video appearing on the screen right now, and I'll see you there.